what I'm going to share in this video is going to create a little bit of attention, I know, because we're all very different in how we think and what we perceive of people, depending on what they say, depending on their opinions, if I should put it that way. All right. But this is just one of the things that normally happens to we creators, especially those of us who have a bit of influence and leverage with some things that we do on a regular in terms of the discipline that we find ourselves in. So me being a photographer and a filmmaker, this is mostly something that I encounter. And I want to share one particular one that really sticks out a lot. Very, very prominent story that I don't normally tell of people, but I feel like I should share this with you because as we are all emerging and as we are all growing, we are definitely going to encounter some offers that may sound, that may look cool and good on the outside, but what's actually within it may not be what we are actually expecting. And if you are not careful, you might sign off even to extend where you sign contracts that you're going to find yourself wanting in the end. So that's what I want to share with you. Let's get right into it. I don't really remember the exact date, but I can recall that it's definitely, let's say three or four months ago. Mm -hmm. I think so. Maybe not that long, maybe three months ago. But just as I said, any service provider, any content creator, anyone who does something that offers services to people will in one way or the other, one day encounter this situation. So this is how my story went. I was there one day and um, I got this phone call and um, this person introduced himself as someone that I know, but I couldn't really, you know, put together the voice and make out who he was. But he mentioned a familiar person and I said, okay, fine, no problem. So I, I mean, it was a phone call, so I was waiting for what he was about to say. And he started off by saying that he is based in Spain and he works on a couple of projects for clients and sometimes he does his own production. He has his own production um, um, equipment. He works with a number of people and he checked out my work and he realized that I'm someone that he knows from the past. With this common person, he mentioned the name of. So he went on talking about the projects that he's planning to do in the coming months and he wants me on it. So that was just about that. And anytime that um, anyone confronts me with a project, what I do first of all is to make the person know that I work in a team and I work with people, it's not just me, even though you see my face on my Instagram and all my social media platforms, you may think that I work alone, but most often than not, some of the projects that I pick up will demand extra hands. So I go along with a team and I have a couple of people that I normally work with on a regular. So you normally see me with a certain set of people depending on what project it is. So if it's a music video, there's this one particular friend of mine called Mali, who normally works with me. He shoots behind the scenes for me when I'm shooting films and all that. So in, in a nutshell, I'm basically a team. Kobe Shots is actually a team and it's registered as Kobe Shots Media. So I just explained to the person that this is what it's all about. It's not just me, I'm a team. So the person went ahead and said, okay, cool. I know that you have a team and all of that, but there's a project where I'm looking at getting you on board. But if you believe that it's gonna be much convenient for you to work with your team, then why not? You can as well bring them over. So I said, okay, cool. So I was still expecting him to really explain exactly what project it was. And said, okay, I've already spoken about the production and all the things that I wanna do. So um, what if, <laughs> and that's where it actually happened. I was totally furious how he went forward with this. One thing I need to cut across is that when you are listening to a client or a prospect and they reach out to you and they start talking and you know selling shots, the project that they are coming to do it means that they are not ready to actually invest in your craft. And what a lot of clients also don't regard is that if I'm working on a project for you, it's going to be in a duration of let's say two days for the production, the end product is let's say two minutes. They don't think about the production time that we put in, the investment, the time, the energy, the skill sets that we've accumulated over the years in the past. And if we present to you, let's say a five minute project and it looks good, it is looking good because of all those years, the experiences that we've accumulated together to produce that. And that's what clients don't understand. So you have to make sure that your client knows exactly who you are and how you operate. Make sure that you lay everything in front of them and you also make sure that they also tell you everything because what I've noticed about clients here in Ghana particularly is that they will downplay 
they will sell short the project what it is and ask you first of all about how much are you going to charge if a client comes straight forward to ask you about how much you're going to charge for a video project be very careful be very wary of how you move forward with the question and start off by getting the client to actually explain exactly what the project is about because if you forego that and you just mention a price they pick it up and negotiate on that before they will let you know what project it is and that's not when you're going to fall back and rethink and bring forward another counter you know offer or another counter charge it wouldn't really work it wouldn't really sell you well but first of all your work on your social media platforms, let's say that's where your portfolio is, Behance, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, wherever that you have your work that people can, you know, just bump into. Make sure that it is good enough. And once they have seen your work, you have to get that guarantee that they've actually seen it by asking them. Go ahead and ask them once more. Let them confirm that they've actually seen. If they haven't, send them links. Let them check out your work. And when they come, they know who they're going to deal with and they see the caliber of work that you put together. Because a lot of clients come forward through um, you being recommended to them or, I mean, you being referred to them. So they come to you in confidence of whoever recommended you to them and they go forward with the negotiations. So make sure that the client has a fair idea about how your work looks like and how you operate, first of all. Then you can negotiate depending on both of you, your confidence level in each other. So I digress, but it's very important that I pointed that out. So back to the story. This is where exactly that hit me that this was a bummer and I was actually wasting my time. I shouldn't be paying attention to this and you know, moving forward because I had to actually cut things short. This is what he asked me. All right, so because I'm based in Spain, um, I'm gonna want you to come over on a project and I hope that will be cool with you. And I said, fine, it will be cool with me as long as the project is something that falls within my jurisdiction or my um, principles, everything that I work, my work ethics, if it conforms with it, I'm cool. So I just need to understand the kind of project it is. Let me know and I'll relay to my team. We are, we are going to actually deliberate over it before we come forward back with a feedback. So I made him understand that. I said, okay, cool, no problem. Then he went ahead to say that because this project, for instance, might happen abroad in Spain, particularly, I'm gonna be flying you guys over to Spain to put on a project and all that. And I knew where he was actually going to. It was actually dawning on me that this guy was going to definitely tell me that he was giving me a platform. <laughs> you see, that is why I said people might have mixed feelings because I've had arguments with people and they always think that I am proud because I believe in myself, I know my worth, I know my value. I put a lot of value on what I do. That's very, very important. The first thing that I always try to get people to understand, especially people with intentions to actually work with me, I make sure that they know what I am worth, who I'm worth, and how I produce my work. The process, how intellectual I am about that particular project and the discipline. So if it's filmmaking, I know everything through and through. I do research if it's something that I haven't tried before. I make sure that beforehand I do my best to research into it and understand the caliber of productivity I have to put in before I come forward. So I'm always prepared before I get on set and I know what I'm about. So if there's anything that may come, you know, as um, an interference or anything that may just crop up, I always have another plan to buttress it or to buttress what my plans were before and get the project executed without a hitch. So when he said that um, because he's gonna fly us all over to wherever it is, Spain or whatever, and um, it is gonna be like that and you're not gonna get paid. And I said, really? That was the very first thing that came out of my mouth, really? And I said, yeah, because um, I'll be providing you with a platform. I said, um, excuse me, sir. <laughs> I didn't want him to continue. What I said was, Okay, I get your point. It's a fair idea. It is good that you think of that, that you're sending us over and all that you're gonna pay for some bills and accommodation, the flight, tickets, you know, all these things, you're gonna pay for it. I totally understand. But if you're looking at this as a platform for me, then you're actually in the wrong hands. I'm not the person for it. I told him point blank and he asked me why. I said, it's because I don't want anyone to think that they are going to put me on for my work. If you are going to pay me for my work, you are paying me for my work because 
this is what I do to earn a living. This is what I do to make profit from. I've learned this over years. And if you've seen my work and you adore it and you are convinced that this is the person for your project. And if I actually am, you're going to respect who I am and move forward. It's good. It's a fair idea to just bring this before me to find out what I make of it. But my answer is a terrible no. I don't even need to <laughs> go back to my people or to ask my team, or do they make up? No, hell no. It's not gonna happen, trust me. And this is it. It has nothing to do with pride. It has nothing to do with, you know, being quirky or whatever it is. It's about how I value myself as a commodity, as a brand. Because I've learned over years, trying to perfect whatever it is that I do. And I do my best. I even go out of my way to invest what I've made from my projects back into another project that I haven't gotten that opportunity to have a client pay for initiation of that particular project. I do it myself, put it out there for people to see it. And that's what we call spec ads. Adverts that are actually organized and are executed by we, the creators themselves. I put it out that people will see it and, oh, Kobe can actually do this. Oh, this guy can actually do this. Then it means that if I come to him, I can fully and confidently confide in him with my project, can confidently, you know, put everything before him and entrust my project in his hands. I know that he's going to do a massive, exquisite job. And that was it. So because that's what I believe in, that's what my conviction is all about. I told him no. And these are the reasons. I wasn't rude. I wasn't rude. Probably he might think of that as such. And maybe he contacts creators and he gives them such offers and probably they take it. I don't know, but that's not who I am. I put a lot of value on what I do and I respect what I do. And if it's going to be something about traveling or whatever, I know that very well, there's going to be one day that I'm going to have the means to travel wherever I want to go to by my own terms on my own terms. And if there's going to be a client who's going to get me abroad to work on something, I definitely have to get paid. And I'm working with people. Maybe I may be okay. My, 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 my teammates may not be okay. And you cannot just force them because you are taking us to Spain or whatever. I'm here in Ghana. I'm doing a decent job. I'm working on my own, trying to make ends meet. And it's paying. I mean, bit by bit, even though it's not as much as I really expect, I know that every offer may come my way and I have to be very picky regardless because I am a brand. I have values. I have principles. I need to govern myself with these, abide by them and make sure that Anything that I take upon myself is consistent and it will attract the right clients who are actually confident in you, who are actually ready to invest in me as a brand to bring forth a good project that I'll be very glad to bring forth. And my client will be happy, I'll be happy, my audience will be happy, my teammates will be happy, and we'll all be happy. And it's a win-win situation. But where your client thinks that he has leverage on you and he's going to, or the client is going to um, make a profit of you because he's going to give you this offer or whatever offer. It depends on you. It depends on you. But moving forward, the years after, what is the client going to make of you? If the client relates you to yet another person, a person brings another offer like that, are you going to move forward, you know, brooding on offers as such? Aren't you going to grow? Aren't you going to make ends meet of your productivity? And if you don't take care, you're going to be confined in just that space and you wouldn't get the opportunity to actually grow. And there's one thing I always tell people who come to me, ask for, you know, ways that they can make a living out of filmmaking and photography. If you really want to make money, if you really want to live off of what you love to do, a craft like photography and filmmaking, live on your own terms, you know, rest when you can, rest when you want to, edit when you want to, go shoot when you want to, then you need to put a lot of value on yourself. The work starts now. And people are going to see you, and if you put yourself out there and you are that intellectual and you command respect, clients will also respect you, and they wouldn't even have any cause to doubt your productivity and the confidence that you have in yourself because you don't even have to say it. I think <laughs> your work is going to be doing the talking for you. And that is where you have to look forward to. Think about value. Value comes first. And whoever will come your way with any offer whatsoever, 
know where you stand, make the person really understand who you are and what you're ready for and what you're not going to take up, the person will know what to do next. And this is actually my story. And trust me, I have no care in the world if you object to what my principles are. But that's actually me. You may have your own values. It's your own, I mean, cup of tea. Maybe it works for you, it wouldn't work for me. Because I have learned over time, and whatever it is that I have as a knowledge is worth money, is worth a lot of money. Because I myself, I have invested a lot of money. And I need that money back to put it into yet more growth and look forward to growing and becoming the best version of myself than I was yesterday. So yeah, there's something that I wanted to give you. Maybe you've been encountering this and probably just take up on any offer. You have to be very wary of whatever it is and people who come your way to offer you whatever it is. Be careful about that. And in the way forward, I'm sure that you're going to grow and you're going to flourish in your business and you're gonna make the right decisions in the years forward. Thank you very much for watching this video. I'm gonna catch you later. Have a wonderful day. See ya.